Travis Kelsey's status for week one is in doubt after the Chiefs tight end suffered a knee hyperextension earlier today in practice. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the reporting here and what this could mean in terms of severity. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if anatomy and sports injuries interest you, then please consider subscribing to help support the channel. This was the reporting earlier today, essentially from Ian Rappaport here and multiple other football reporters that Kelsey status is in doubt. Of course, their opener is in just a couple of days against the Lions. Essentially, he had a hyperextension injury in his knee at practice. The concerns here just from the reporting to initially point out are that they're waiting for the swelling to go down and then they'll go from there. Another follow-up tweet from Schefter saying that after some tests today, the Chiefs believe his ACL is intact, but there's inflammation in his knee and they will test it again tomorrow to determine his availability for Thursday night versus the Lions. This tweet, there's a lot of stuff just not really proper and really confusing about this. So let's just dive into all this. There's no video about the injury. So let's just talk about hyperextension mechanism and positioning of the joint with our biodigital anatomy tool. So extension is when the knee is straight. So here the knee is straight and extension. Flexion is when the knee is bent upwards. Extension is when you kick it out. So hyper above, hyperextension is when the knee gets further extended out this way. What that will do is it'll put increased pressure on the front part of the knee from compression as the front of the knee is being pushed together. And then on the back side of the knee, it'll put tension, which can result in some tearing on the structures along the back side of the knee. Now, if we zoom into all of this, of course, our ligaments <clears throat> like our ACL, PCL are sitting inside the knee. And if you extend the knee far enough beyond normal, you can actually injure either the ACL or PCL or potentially both. Hyperextension injury prognosis is one of the hardest things to predict even when we have footage in terms of how severe the hyperextension was. Now, of course, if we get to things like 45 degrees of hyperextension, we often can assume that there's gonna be a significant injury, but most of these are not that severe. And we all remember the example of Giannis a couple of years ago in the NBA playoffs where he had this horrific looking hyperextension and only missed something like two weeks. But my concern with all the reporting so far is that number one, there is inflammation in his knee. And then we saw the other report that there's swelling in the knee and they're waiting for the swelling to go down. There's only a handful of things that will cause rapid accumulation of swelling inside the joint. And this is where we're a little bit at the mercy of the telephone through the reporting, because there's a difference between the knee is just swollen in the subcutaneous tissues like below the skin versus a true effusion, which is fluid inside the joint. When we see a report like this talking about swelling in the knee, we often assume that they mean an effusion, meaning fluid inside the joint. But there's only, like I said, a handful of things that will cause a rapid, meaning same day or the next morning, effusion to develop within a knee. And they're not good things. The patella can dislocate, that would cause an effusion. You can have a bad meniscus tear. You can have an injury to the ACL or the PCL, or in some cases, depending on how bad, something like a fracture or a major cartilage meniscus injury. But you don't develop fluid inside the knee that's bad enough that you need to wait for it to go down when you just have a little minor bumper contusion. These tests that they're talking about where initial tests show that his ACL was intact, these are just gonna be physical exam tests. These are not 100% perfect. We all, of course, remember what happened with Von Miller where it was reported his ACL was normal, but then he had to get it surgically fixed. So these physical exam tests, especially when somebody has fluid on the knee, are difficult. They're not the most reliable, and oftentimes we can be wrong because of how the knee is guarded and how it's stiffened up when we're trying to stress and test the integrity of the ACL. The ACL is running from the front of the tibia to the back side of the femur, and so to stress it, one of the tests we do is called a Lachman maneuver, where we firmly stabilize the femur, and then we hold the tibia and we pull anterior. If the ACL is torn, there's no resistance to that anterior translation, and so we don't feel a firm endpoint. But if the ACL is intact, we feel a nice, solid, firm endpoint. There are a couple others, like a pivot shift or an anterior drawer. Personally, I like using the Lachman, but again, none of them are 100% perfect. And the fact that there's already rapid swelling inside Kelsey's knee, in my opinion, does not bode well in terms of severity. Now, does this mean that his ACL is actually torn? No, you can certainly hyperextend your knee and not have an ACL or a PCL tear. But even at a minimum, you're often talking about significant bone bruising or injury to the capsule around the knee, things that in and of themselves can be multi-week absences as the swelling calms down, as his pain improves. Even if there is no true structural damage in terms of the ligaments or the menisci, if you have persistent pain in the joint from something like a bone bruise where the front end of that joint bumped together really hard from the hyperextension, that pain can inhibit the function of your muscles around your knee, which can then impair the ability to protect the ligaments and lead to a further injury. So 
I will honestly be very surprised if we see Kelsey play just over 36, 48 hours from now, knowing that number one, he's got a rapid effusion that it's big enough that they have to wait for it to go down to re-examine the stability of his ACL. If these are really major, we usually have gotten some reporting by now that's a little bit more concerning. And so the fact that we haven't seen that yet does make me more optimistic for just long-term rest of the season. But based on what we know so far, I would not be shocked at all if Kelsey misses one, maybe two or three weeks, depending on just how quickly his pain resolves, assuming that we don't find anything like a major ligament injury. But again, I'd be very surprised if he plays because of this reporting of the rapid swelling and inflammation in his knee occurring the same day. That should always raise a red flag for a more severe underlying injury. So that's it for the video, everybody. I hope it was educational. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.